Greetings to the brothers. This is Wayman Brown of the EsquireProject.com, a site that helps black men to be self-enterprising and to eliminate barriers to personal achievement. Check out the links in the description. As always, don't hesitate to touch base with me. And again, I thank you for the support in advance. This next video is entitled A Message to the Love Deprived Black Man. YouTube is surrounded with videos on the dating game and how to sleep with women, how to get what you want from a woman without getting scathed in the process. Essentially, playing her if necessary before she plays you. But there is a sector of men out there that turn to us as media creators for assistance and handling obstacles when dealing with women. And I believe that these men need to be addressed more. And these are the men who actually don't even want to have multiple women. These are the brothers that never intended on having a roster. These are the men that sincerely either currently want or who have just wanted one beautiful woman who's really into them and who is loyal to them in their life as a long-term girlfriend or eventually perhaps as a wife. And likely they've been brought up to live under somewhat of a formal moral code of conduct by their mother and or father. And they've grown up with the anticipation of building a family with a good woman. Now, these men might be considered late bloomers as they weren't necessarily dealing with a lot of females during their youth. They didn't necessarily have girlfriends as young as middle school, or junior high, high school or even college. And. As they're now experiencing different scenarios involving women, they're coming into the realization that the guidelines that they had been accustomed to abiding by when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex have been severely ineffective now that they're experiencing life in diverse settings. And they've been wanting to figure out why do bad things happen to them when it comes to dealing with the opposite sex. Now, these men are typically speaking upstanding brothers. Most of them are probably under the age of 35, more specifically, likely in their 20s. And they've attempted to overall do the right things in life. And they sincerely want to believe still. They want to believe and having a loving relationship throughout life. And they want to believe in romance. And if you are one of these brothers, then you know that you've designed a large portion of your life towards being granted the gift of having your other half. You've made it your aim to stay out of trouble to keep a job, to be responsible, and to share your heart with a woman that you can build a life with. And while I won't discourage any of you brothers from experiencing a woman's intimacy, I do want for you to be aware of and to be prepared for some things that you may not be conscious of. You know, when you think about growing up and going to school and how you would notice that pretty girl in class or the pretty girl in your neighborhood, the one that has that beautiful smile, she's that nice girl that everyone knows. She always has her hair done and she would always smell good. 
you'd always notice the subtle things like the cute nail polish that she would have on. And in passing, maybe she would only say a few words to you here and there. But when you did speak, it would make your heart skip a beat. And you couldn't wait for swim class so you could see her body a little bit more. Or you couldn't wait for the summertime as perhaps you were preparing for your final exams for the year so you could see more skin. Those beautiful tone legs of hers. And that charming lip gloss that she would wear. And you would fantasize about this girl a lot because she was your dream girl. Now this girl and the girls that she hung around seemed to always like a certain kind of guy in class. And I'm 34 and I think back around 20 years ago, typically, especially if you kind of come from my time, this was maybe the guy that had waves. He always had a haircut and he wore designer clothing. Back then it was Tommy Hilfiger, Nautica, a Ralph Lauren polo, a pair of Tim's or some Jordans, and like a first down coat or a jacket. And the guy that the girls would like a lot of times, he grew up comfortably and you can bet that either towards the end of high school or perhaps shortly after he was driving. And maybe he played basketball or football. But this was the guy that a lot of the girls wanted. And you would always overhear them talking about how fine he was. And they would always be complimenting him on his handsomeness. And he would smile and brush his hair over his wave cap with his earring glistening to match his bright grin. Now this guy, he may have found himself a time or two in trouble with the law. Maybe he tried to sell drugs. And perhaps he also became a dad fairly early in life. And then later on you discovered that this was the guy that the pretty girl that you always wanted ended up getting with and having a baby by. Now, maybe you always wanted this girl or a girl like her, and you always wondered why they never chose you, why they never really seemed to notice you. You're a put together, decent looking guy, and you were smart and funny, and you were always very nice. And you would always think about how much you would love to have a girlfriend like this. And you would love to build a world for this type of a girl. And if she was in your life, you knew that you would be able to move mountains with her by your side. And that you would always treat her right. But for some reason, she just didn't seem to notice you much. Now, as you moved along in life and looked around, you noticed that many of the people that you grew up with were having children and some of the fellas had living girlfriends. Some had even gotten married. Perhaps you're now in your early 20s. And maybe you had taken different females out and spent some time with a few, got to know a few had some type of physical encounter or encounters, but you still felt relatively inexperienced. But you try to keep your nose clean and stay busy and keep a check in your pocket every week or two. But when you return home after a hard day, there's a part of you that just wonders, when will it be your turn? When will it be your turn? To experience love. The type of love that you hear about 
in an R&B song? When will it be your turn to experience the femininity, the warmth, and the touch of an attractive woman who's truly into you and who truly wants you for you? When you haven't heard the words, I love you in so long, if ever at all. When all you've been wanting is a soulmate. When you want a woman to be your true companion for life. When you want a true friendship with her. For her to be your best friend. A friend who will put your interests first and you for her the same. A friend that you can share that unbreakable bond with. A friend that truly wants to see you happy while you both have that security of knowing that no matter what happens in life between the two of you, no matter what you go through, You'll always be a part of each other's lives in a very close capacity. When you want that storybook of being able to play any role for each other that you need from each other. When you want to know that you'll always have a special place in her heart. A closeness is what you want. A true bond. You want to know. That you will both always have each other's back. And that you'll always be down for each other for life. And now. After all these years. You finally cross paths with her. You met socially. And you've been into each other from the jump. And despite the fact that you have great conversations. Really little needs to be said. Because. When you hold her and when she's in your arms. When you gaze in each other's eyes. And when you kiss her. And when you hold hands, you know she's supposed to be for you. There's a special connection between the two of you. A very unique chemistry. And as you get to know her every day, and you both open up to each other more and more, you don't want this to end because everything that you have ever fantasized about and been wanting and been wishing for is right in front of you right now. Could it really be divine? Could it be that you were actually sent to each other to actually complete each other? And that you were supposed to meet and share this love. And you want a part of her that no man has ever charted before. You want her whole heart, don't you? You want her heart even more than you want her body. You just want her to be all yours. You want the exclusivity of her interest and her attraction. You want to know all of her secrets and all of her fears. You want her to be completely vulnerable with you. And you also want to be completely vulnerable with her as well. And then she assures you that she's in love with you. And that she's not going anywhere. And that she feels so blessed 
to have you in her life. And she tells you that she'll never leave you because she knows that you were sent to her for a reason. This woman is your angel and you love her. And my dear brothers, how I feel for you because I've been here. And the reason that I feel for you is that you simply cannot see certain things when your heart is all the way in it. And I think it's appropriate for me to express some of the things that either you have went through or that you may go through during this process. And I truly want to be able to illustrate what often happens. So I want to share with you an original poem that I wrote myself. And it's tentatively titled The Desire for Her Intimacy. The desire for her intimacy, for her most intimate parts, to know her canvas from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. The girl inside to the woman that she has become. Her spirit for me to take full possession of her mind and her heart, her essence, her core being to implant into her my wisdom and my love, cherishing every piece of her. Reflecting as I'm sitting here on how I wanted her to know that I was there How I just wanted her to see me. The full vision of a man destroyed and rebuilt. More than once, more than a few times. This shattered glass. But these pieces became a work of art. All in the universal plan to show her a better way. To be heaven sent. To be a God sent. An answer to her prayers from the creator. To make everything right, even when she didn't see the wrong. Her details were for me to notice, as I always would. Her beautiful forehead was where my kisses belonged. As I would look into the window of her soul. A frosted glass full of fog where I left a fingerprint, hoping that the warmth would give me a glimpse of the picture inside. Her face, my precious gift, not to be tainted with the semen of a thousand men, but she is already taken in more ways than one. The signatures on her soul that were written long ago those broad cursive strokes taking up the page letting me know that they were there that they are here that they will be with even more to come where titles turn into crumbs for she is possessed but I saw a space to squeeze my initials on the last line in a tight corner with barely any room. No, not for me, not reserved for me. I saw a space to care for her until the end of time, to guide her through tribulation, to protect her, 
to happily exchange my life for hers, only to discover that she was but a stranger. So my initials would eventually fade as she seeks out what she wants while I wanted to so give her what she needed. And now it's too late for us to be of one mind, of one flesh, of one spirit and one body, where her neck is my appetizer after midnight, her navel is my cup, her collarbone waiting for my affection, her lips to warm my neck. On those coldest nights, and in the midst of those summer days, even during the hottest season, the cold bitterness of winter will be present. I wanted her to return back, but she is not welcome. Now my door is closed. The entrance is sealed. A once welcome companion cannot trespass on my heart. To blend, to melt, to be one. Exceeding the physical, where love can still be made at a distance. Though love we never made. That connection of two spirits that is unbreakable. Powerful, but now contaminated. Corrupted. Destroyed. Returning back to the dust from which our matter was created. And now I ask for God's blessings upon a new generation. To give them a chance to have what I did not. What we did not. But she always will. In some form. For she came to me with her heart spread and her mind divided, where only a small sum remained for me. As I saw something sacred for us, something sacred between us. But the blessing was to be a godsend to myself, a gift that can't be taken away, where there is no division. No bits and pieces. As I was an open book. But she was not. She marked the corner of her page where she would always leave off. This gift to myself to be a godsend is truly a blessing because there is no division. There is no bits and pieces. So I write with broader strokes on my own spirit. First, middle, last, and suffix. With plenty of room that was made by me. Made for me. With all of this love and abundance to be shared. Because fear and love cannot share the same pillow at night. But if only she would have seen me. If only she knew. If only she cared enough. If only she would have let me in. But that seal upon her heart. From pain endured. Plain defense. Hiding her face from me. Hiding her most innermost parts. Hiding herself from the one that she loved. The one that she could never truly love. As those spirits within her veins take residence. And those men lie dormant within her womb for a lifetime. If only she... If only I would have loved myself enough. To say enough is enough of getting caught in the crossfire of walking into bullets to be her hero and still tossed away trekking through hell to help her get to heaven 
if only sooner than later. But here I stand, unbreakable, once broken, rebuilt with the wisdom to know that in the end, the love of self is the only love that I can call my own. My brothers, I encourage you to keep your mind strong, your heart in check, and may wisdom be with you.